Okay, so today we are talking with Sri Manju Katragada, and Sri Manju is a Hay House author of the book Connect to Your Inner Guide, and it is Seven Sutras for Mindful Awakening. And we're going to talk a bit today <laughs> about the book and about Sri Manju's journey to get to the place where she is today. So welcome Sri Manju, thanks for joining today. Thank you Sandra, it's such a lovely pleasure to be here and talking to you. Yeah, and it's such a wonderful topic. I'm so excited to be talking about our inner guide and how to connect with our inner guide. But before we go into that side of things, I want to talk a little bit about you and your journey so far to get to the place you're at now, because you're in a really good place now. Um, but it wasn't always like that, was it? No, life had its own uh, ways, the ups and downs, like as we call it, you know. Uh, back in uh, 2009, until then, like uh, I didn't take life seriously. I was in a very bad place. Like it was the darkest moment. Uh, I ever could see myself in like, you know, after giving birth to my second child, that is where all the light has begun. Like it's the dark tunnel has ended and the bright side started in, but it just didn't happen straight away. Uh, we realized that I was uh, getting rheumatoid arthritis uh, and uh, they were trying to trace me as uh, fibromyalgia and, and, and they classified as uh, after giving birth as side effect to having second child. I said like wow is this what it is about and not only that like you know I lost my job and my handbag was stolen a thousand euros so a lot happened in a short space like you know and uh, then I realized my little girl um, who is only a couple of months uh, weeks old uh, she had reflex and uh, allergies as well uh, very highly intolerant uh, food allergies at the time and uh, yeah, it wasn't a pleasant place. Every day I would uh, take an hour to get out of the bed and nearly cry every an hour, like with sadness. And it happened that I was getting the medications and everything. It wasn't going anywhere. And one day my husband said, um, stop, you're alive. You're breathing. Be happy that you're seeing your kids, you know. I did cry for that even, <laughs> that he was saying like those words, but I'm very thankful that he did say that, you know, it all started since then. Actually, I stopped um, kind of being pity for myself, rather seeing, oh, actually, even though I'm taking an hour to get out of the bed or find it hard to feed them, but still I'm being with them, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of parents don't have that opportunity. And I started seeing the simple pleasures I was able to get and the support I was getting from the family as well. Like, yeah. And then I started with Reiki, a self-feeling journey and uh, meditations and gratitude is the biggest thing that obviously it has provoked a lot of thoughts like you know first thing in the morning like doing the gratitude i said like i i, I did watch a movie called a secret <laughs> i think when you're in your spiritual journey that's the first book that uh, pops out isn't it in the yeah movie as well definitely uh, so yeah i said like okay let me try i'm a very skeptic person so for something that tries and works for me i go on holding it up for a long time so I did uh, have this uh, gratitude journey, which I'm still having it for and slowly working on it. And along the way, I realized, like, I started trusting myself, which I never did before. Uh, trusting myself was not something that I grew up doing it. I was always uh, anchoring back to my dad or my mom or to my brother. And then later when I got married to her, my husband, like, you know, even if it's a restaurant, oh, you make a choice because you're good at it, not me. It's always that self-doubt which is very good with me, like, or anyone of us, like, you know. And so I had to take that coat off and believe, no, actually, even if it's a crap restaurant, let's go and try it out. Like, you know, what's wrong? It's only a food. Like, same take the risk. Started. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And calculated risk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so which is good. Like, yeah, started booking flights with Ryanair as well, rather than flying for Mexico or something, just by an hour journey, like, you know, trying to do those simple things, which was like, yeah, getting that uh, self-doubt off. And um, along the way as well, uh, one more layer that I was shredding was forgiveness. <clears throat> Forgiving uh, myself and also the situations that I have been on, like, you know, why me was my question when I was with arthritis. So, uh, it was like I was only 29 and arthritis, two young children, no, not fair. 
but then I realized, okay, that's me. Thank you for that. Because only then I could kickstart on my right path, which I was having a little detour. So yeah, always look into what is that I realized that we need to look into. And obviously forgiving ourselves is very important as well. Like, yeah. Uh, taking that layer off again, I realized, oh, there is a little child of me who wants to have more fun because I had these OCD symptoms. Everything has to be neat and tidy, perfect place and everything. But I was having very little time for myself, like, you know, having fun time. So even though raising with kids, then I slowed down to actually enjoy with them, getting onto the floor with them, enjoying doing craft with them. I love art. So doing the artwork with them, like, you know, taking out them into the nature as well. So these little things, again, um, invoked my own inner child that was missing for all these years, uh, submerged inside deep in, was coming out, more happiness was around. So now here yeah, still it's a work in progress, like every time something new comes up, oh, here you go, let's work. But the deeps are uh, not too deep down, they're much more lighter, so I can come out of it with all the toolkits that I have uh, worked on and uh, skeptically prove myself as well uh, so yeah things do work out yeah it's just we need to believe in that light is there yeah and I love when you say if something comes up you think oh here we go I have to work yeah. on it because a lot of times people think oh this is coming up and as you were saying originally it's like why me why is this happening hmm. now it's an opportunity to release and to heal and to forgive and I think when we look at those things as opportunities rather than burdens, we can work through mm. them really quickly as well. So yeah. your process to connecting with your inner guide, um, how did that start? You mentioned a bit about Reiki and obviously all the things that you're going through. So was Reiki the first thing that led you into it or... Mm. Yeah, Reiki was the first thing. I had like little intuitions all my life, but I never thought like, oh, actually these are intuitions. Even I didn't even know the word back then. But only since uh, back looking back into the journey, oh, actually I was intuitive, but it's again never trusted myself. So the first thing is like uh, when uh, the baby was six months old, she's now eight. Uh, uh, when she was uh, six weeks old, uh, a friend of mine offered for Reiki with her reflex thing, you know, and uh, she just slept off within now uh, two, three minutes less than that the whole night for a six uh, weeks baby. That is quite hard, you know, uh, especially with reflex, she would be crying for three to um, four hours constantly, and we have to hold curls up. <laughs> and I said, like, wow, this is great. No medications there. I'm such a believer in medications, painkillers back then. I said, like, wow, I need to learn this. And for her, I started the journey learning self-healing, uh, Reiki. And when the master said, oh, all you need to do is um, do hands on your heart or your solar plexus chakras uh, and um, tune into the energy. I said, this is great. Like, I don't need to actually make more time for myself having little ones. So that's okay in my schedule. Uh, yeah, that um, brought me much quietening my head space. Because with all the thoughts, like I was always self-doubting, no, I can't do this, I can't do this for my children, you know. But actually, when she would stop crying, oh, actually, it's working. There is something there, you know. And those are the proofs that I brought along. And when I went back, actually, within six weeks, I went back to level two learning the course because it involved distance. So I thought, that's good. Like, you know, even when I'm at work, I can do distance to the babies if they need it in the crash. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, Sitting back in the circle in six weeks' time, I realized like, oh, that's a lot has changed. I'm improved. I'm feeling better, actually. And it's not taking an hour to get ready, but less than that, but which is good progress, yeah. <laughs> so Reiki is kind of, I, it's not a formal meditation, if you look into the terms, but for me, it's a meditation. Mm. Having that uh, 10 minutes for myself is so mandatory. Yeah. And... We're talking about our inner guide and there might be some people who don't know what their inner guide is or haven't experienced their inner guide. So mm. how would you explain inner guide? What is that? Um, for uh, recently I read this, I really love this, you know, for every person that is, or uh, for everyone that is alive, that has a life, has this thing called intuition, even with the animals. Mm. Every living thing has it. So we do have it, but we are not aware of this so-called intuition. And for me, inner guide is that intuition. And some of us like to call in as angels, God's energy, spirit guides. Uh, and uh, all, or uh, if we are like not into all these things, that's still okay. We do believe in the higher power. There is the energy that is holding us all together. And that is that inner guide that we all have it. 
within ourselves, that little nudge which says, you can do it or you can't do it, you know? And that is the little whispers that we get to hear quite often, like, you know? And um, first thing is, note that we all have it. No ifs and buts, I realize later only, like, oh yeah, everyone, uh, no matter how much um, critic you are. Uh, the best, uh, even like, if you look at the Financial Times, even, you know, they talk about like, oh, it's my instinct. It's my inner guide or gut feel that I have invested in this shit and boom, that is mm -hmm. so good, you know. And then I realized, oh, even in my business meetings, they're using this word. So it's like very common. And um, it's only like when we have to take up like, oh, do I need to go for this project? Or do I need to be like uh, changing my job? These kind of things we doubt more because these are bigger things, you know, rather like, you know, should I um, go for a morning walk or not? These are simple things. So we don't self doubt so much, but that inner guide is always there for us. Yeah. So we're really. always using it day to day without necessarily realizing it. Mm. And it's when we come to making a big decision that we think, oh, how am I going to make this decision? I'm so confused. And we forget about this yeah. guidance, this intuition that we all naturally have. And I think a lot of us are overthinking things as well. We get into our heads and we forget to into, tune into our bodies sometimes, mm. which is where the intuition lies. Um, so if you could advise people who maybe have been through some of the same things that you have been through or who are going through some of those things right now, what could they do now to start connecting to their inner guide? What can they do? Just a simple practice that they could begin to do straight away. Uh, the best thing is, um, the first thing is welcome to the tribe. If you have realized you're uh, acknowledging that you are looking for this something called the inner guide or connecting to the intuition, because there are a lot of support out there. Only when we acknowledge it, when we are on that path of realizing, we are seeing a lot of things. Uh, first thing is to, yes, you do have this strong intuition. Believe in yourself. The belief is the biggest thing you need to hold it on, no matter how many people would say it. No, you can't do it. But yes, that's the main thing. Uh, trusting yourself, not only believing, but trusting yourself, you know, take a step back and start your gratitude. Gratitude helps you to stay grounded and uh, letting our egos uh, not uh, work on our head spaces as well. Like, you know, and um, think about your goals and make an action plan out of it and see what is your gut feeling saying about it. And also write down what is your uh, mind saying about those things, you know, uh, which is logical. So which is fine, but seeing like where are you more dragged towards, which are your pros and cons. Like I, I totally believe in writing things down. So you're like uh, putting um, your logical mind to action as well. Just not only believing on your gut feeling. So this is much like, oh, here you go. The proof is that, that we can work on it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, those are the basic ones that you can start with at any stage of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It may not be only like, oh, it's too long. I'm like 75. No, you're still young come on you can do it you know yeah so step one is believing step believe two is believe in yourself trust, trust in yourself mm. step three is fostering gratitude bringing gratitude into your life step mm. four then is goals and action plans so start connecting with what writing. your goal is and writing mm. down and even as you say going into that logical space of pros and cons but allowing mm. yourself to trust in the inner guidance as well. And yeah. it's funny because I find that some of my clients who come to me, they'll say, you know, I'm not happy or, you know, things aren't going as well as I want. I'm feeling a bit stuck. And I'll say to them, well, where do you see yourself in a year's time? What's your ideal scenario? Mm. And they won't be able to tell me. They won't actually know what it is they want. So if you don't know what you want, you're never going to get there. Yeah. Mm. So that's great advice. So writing down your goals and your action plan to get there. Yeah. Brilliant. And also uh, like recently we were talking as well off conversations there, uh, which is like when some thoughts come in, there is a fear that nudges there. Oh my God, I can't do it. But then I always question back that thought. Why did it even come into my head if I can't do it? You know, and why did I get this brilliant idea? Even the book thing, like, you know, why did it come up? Like if I'm not able to write even, 
uh, email. I was criticized of writing an email, which is not good enough. And then I was put on to the writer's course as an adult. So here, writing a book, like, and then I question back. And that lets your fear go. And you start like, oh, that is a good thing. That is something that I really need to do. This inner child wants to do. The soul has to do. And this is where you get to do the things. And writing down is great. You're acknowledging something is being planted for you. It's like the weeds, the lawn weeds, only when you plant on the grass, on the ground, like, you know, they start uh, coming out. And that is the first thing. Writing is the biggest thing. Let the universe hear you. Mm. And I so agree. I know for me, if I want to connect with my inner guide, writing is such a big part of that process. And Mm. sometimes if I'm in my head, just even, you know, putting things on paper, it just creates a space for clearing thoughts and allowing myself to get into a space where I can feel clear in my head. Because when it's all up here, it's really Mm. difficult to be clear, but even just putting it on paper just acts as a release in itself. Yeah. Yeah. And as saying that, you know, it's a worry as well. That's the best thing. Uh, the clients would say, oh, I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. I'd say like, actually, write your worries down. And they will only write three or four, you know, but they think their head is full of worries. Nothing is perfect. The papers are magic, isn't it? <laughs> when yeah. you write, nothing is there, actually. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. easier to work. Oh, actually, it's only three or four. Let me work on it. Make an action. Yeah. And that's so true. When it's in our head, it can seem much bigger but when we put it on paper yeah exactly and when we put it on paper it's like oh that's not too bad actually it was just I was building it up in my head and sometimes what we're thinking isn't even real we're imagining the worst case scenario and not something that's real um so in your book you give loads of really practical tips and tools of how to begin doing these practices. Um, you talk about in the morning, the first thing that when we get up, it's you know practicing the gratitude and just starting your day off right, which I think is so important because when you start your day off on a positive note, it sets the tone for the rest of the day. So what's your morning ritual or what do you recommend doing in the morning when you first wake up? Uh, the first thing is, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> The way I got into the morning ritual is like, I haven't adapted to this country, Ireland, uh, quite in a long time. I'm here living for nearly 16 years. I come from a very warm country, India. Uh, so I used to not be happy like when I would hear that uh, tick, 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 the sound of the water <laughs> or the rain. You know? the wind and uh, that used to be upsetting me a lot like since um, then I found this uh, on Instagram one of the pages uh, where they post a lovely sunset which is in Greystones happy pair guys you know and mm. I used to see that and wow it's so beautiful actually even it's raining it's still beautiful sunrise you know and I would watch that and slowly uh, from that uh, beautiful note I started doing like thank you for everything thank you for a lovely night of sleep you know and acknowledging having a beautiful bed to sleep in and a loving family and simple saying that i'm healthy and then slowly like uh, what is my day going to be like what am i going to achieve like you know no matter what the weather is outside it's me who is defining it and let me be in control of it and um some days i would still have my sad days or does down times which is okay because i'm a human so what I do is like um, uh, you find these little art things, you know, it says like quotes, like it's a beautiful day. Those kind of quotations. I put it in my bedroom. So I constantly remind myself, oh, snap, change the thought. You know, it's still a beautiful day. I'm going to control it. It's OK. I can do something great inside the home if something outside I can't do. So definitely gratitude things and also uh, looking forward to your day in what the way you want to see it. It's going to be a brilliant day is what I say. Sometimes the girls, the kids would say, oh, mom, today I have an exam. Like, oh, I'm not sure what the day is going to be like. Let's see, like you're going to have great friends and you're going to have a brilliant result to what you can do it, you know, no pressure off. And it's the best thing. When I come back and we talk, oh, yeah, we had a great time. Mm. So that kind of, I think, uh, leads us into a better side, even though we might have uh, kind of downsides. It's not that we are uh, taking it away from our life, but we are not giving a priority to them. That's okay but that helps us to be prepared. Yeah, so rather than jumping straight away to your to-do list or you know things that are going wrong in your life, you're choosing 
to think of all the good that's in your life, even if it's as simple as your warm, cozy bed, you know, yeah. just those little things that make our lives better. And mm. from there, it's just choosing, as you say, in each moment to see the good that's there. And it's a simple practice, but it's one that it does take a lot of practice because when we're used to focusing on all the negative, we have yeah. to get used to focusing on the positive. So that can take a little while to get into that habit. But I love that you have reminders around your bedroom where yeah. you have you know, actual visual reminders and words to remind you of that positivity. So that's really and nice. And if someone can't um, uh, find those art, that's okay. Take a printout or use the post-its. You know? These post-its are brilliant, like uh, where you can write your stuff down and stick everywhere. Mm -hmm. And these don't cost you anything, but they give you a great life app the way like gratitude is your new attitude thing i totally into it you know it is a very slow you don't see the results in overnight i know i don't have the patience at that time as well but looking back yes truly some things you need to stick and do them you know mm -hmm. and 21 days is a great uh, number as well to make or break a habit so yeah just do for 21 days yeah. Yeah, I think that's so important that, you know, people who are starting the gratitude practice, if they don't see results, you know, in the first day or two, that they might give up. And actually, you do see quite fast results, but sometimes it's really subtle things that when we're really mm. busy, we can miss. So that gratitude, it goes with mindfulness, I think, as well. It's being mindful of everything around you and all that stuff you have to be grateful for. Um, and I love as well in your book, you talk about when you were growing up in India and you used to go to school and recite prayers and you didn't realize until now the importance of that prayers and that process. And you talk about how it was something that you did when you were younger, but it's now that you recognize the value of those prayers mm. that you were reciting. Are there any that you have that are favorites or that you still use today that you can share with us? Yeah, prayers is, is something that in India, it's a normal culture. The first thing in the morning when you gather in the school, you do these pledges and the prayers and you just repeat what the teachers are saying, what the choir group is doing, but you never know like, you know, the inner meaning and there is not a need as a child at the time as well. That's what I can now excuse myself. Uh, but back home as well, my dad used to teach me like just pray in front of the God saying, Thank you for everything. He doesn't uh, recite much of these typical Hinduism prayers. He would teach me only that. And my mom would do all these, um, uh, uh, the mantras and everything, which would be very hard for me. And she doesn't know much meaning, so she wouldn't tell me. So I would uh, stick more to my dad's side and say, oh, thank you for God. Uh, thank you. And also that taught me that uh, there is God inside you. So you actually don't need an altar to bow down or to go to a temple. So which is a best lessons I only realized like when I was writing book, oh my God, this is great uh, lessons that I learned and I stick to them without realizing it. Mm -hmm. um, prayers, what I realized is like uh, later on when I started uh, using them in my meditations is, oh, they have such a great because you surrender, you surrender and let go and give it into the higher power. You know, I have worked myself, but here you're taking in charge now, you're working towards on it for the best of me as well. Mm. Uh, one of the things uh, I love this prayer, and um, I'm going to read out uh, in case I miss. Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So this is a beautiful prayer that I also listen in the car, um, which means like from ignorance lead me to truth, from darkness lead me to light. From death, lead me to immortality. Om, peace, peace, peace. And this is exactly when I read the meaning as well. It stuck to me. We all have the downsides, but also it's always looking up to the bright sides as well. You know, it's not that uh, no one is perfect, but we always need to look up our, our own brighter sides. That we have a good smile, we are beautiful, and we are capable of things. And this is a constant reminder to it. Yeah. Mm. And that's uh, my favorite one of all times. Yeah. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And um, I love what you were saying about your dad, like the prayer, just saying, thank you, God, because it's so simple, but so powerful as well. Mm. And um, 
we might actually, the prayer that you read out, the mantra that you read out, we might post that in the comments for people who yeah. are looking to um, recite it themselves because it really is beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. And for people who might be interested in buying your book, in learning more about connecting to their inner guide, where can they get your book? Uh, so yeah, they can get the book with me currently, which is on experiencehealing.ie or connectyourinnerguide.com. Uh, it's also on Amazon on Kindle version. Uh, they can get that if you're into Kindle reading. And uh, yeah, um, first thing is uh, I would like to tell like uh, trust yourself, <laughs> uh, trusting yourself to connect your inner guide. And uh, this book has all these tools and techniques as well. Like I have a little um, a box of uh, experience healing tips, which are great practical. And I think you can see the little box there. Uh, I believe in the tools more than talk. So yes, they can get it on the website experiencehealing.ie or on Amazon. Brilliant. And is there anything else that you want to share with us before we go? Is there anything else people should know about connecting to their inner guide or, you know, just even fostering their intuition a little bit more? Uh, watch out for the signs. Watch out for the signs. Like, you know, if you have a kind of a tough time in your life right now yes you are going through a hard time but it won't be forever remember that and also you're not on your own you're all like i believe that we are all connected by this wave of uh, love around us you know look out for the support ask for help uh, don't be suffering in silence as well as i did so i will never do that again um i have a tribe of uh, friends now where i speak up so i would highly recommend that you know come out of that closet and speak out um also, when you're with the tribe, like, you know, we understand, like, we would have a down moments, but also we all help each other to come out of um, drowning and uh, have a smooth sail in our lives. Yeah. Trust yourself. The biggest thing. Yeah. Mm. And you're and, valuable. And it, it really is that just going back to the self-belief, the self-worth and mm. That surrender though as well, that's something that I am growing more and more into and I would have felt that a need to control things and it's so true when you begin to surrender, when you begin to just hand things over to your inner guide, to your intuition, to a higher source, you know, you're open to so much more coming in, to more guidance, to more opportunities, things that you never would have thought of. And I would have thought it was the opposite, that I'd have to control things, that I'd have to be the one who directed my life. <laughs> but actually, when it was the opposite, when I just surrendered and let go, that was when things started to flow. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. a really tough one, but one that's so important, that surrender, that faith in something bigger than us, but which is also part of us as well. So yeah, yeah. Some lovely tips there. Um, so thank you uh, it's been such a lovely time speaking with you and i am sure the people listening will have gained lots of insight into connecting with their inner guide but definitely there is so much in this book it just is packed full of really practical tips and guidance and things that you can do you know every day just to really get that connection that to strengthen that connection and to start living the life that you desire. So yeah, a beautiful book. If you're drawn to connecting with your inner guide, definitely a must read. So thank you, Sri Manju, and um, so lovely speaking with you today. And uh, hopefully we will speak again soon. Thank you so much, Sandra, for this. Yeah, it's so lovely to have this conversation, share the tips as well. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Enjoy, guys. Have a good day.